so guys i am a verified educator on an online learning platform called on academy right where i am making courses for gate examination both in hindi and english right so you can download the on academy learning app search my name over there act and follow me on that particular platform for awesome videos on the gate chemistry examination all right a very good evening to all of you now let's quickly look at the uh, answer answer let's look at the answer key right so over here i'm not going to give you the detailed answer key right how the explanation basically of how the answer came and I'm, I'm just going to tell you what are the possible answers right what are the tentative answers and uh, if you want the detailed answer key uh, i'll give the link down in the description box uh, for my unacademy unacademy profile from where you can find the tifr answer key for 2019 right so this first question was a repeat question from june 2018 examination that is your csi net exam uh, this question was there for two marks so this this is a propargyl alcohol that is given to us this one over here and the product that we are going to get is this one right in presence of lithium and uh, lithium aluminium hydride sodium ethoxide thf and then again then uh, second is addition of i2 we get this product right then there was a question a very good question that uh, you know the one letter uh, one letter yeah so the one letter um, terms for various amino acids were given to us and there were 20 amino acids right there were 20 amino acids that were there in a box and you had to make the word drawn through those one letter um, chits right now the in the question it was given that uh, there are 20 uh, amino acids over there so each amino acid will have their own uh, single letter description and you pick up one coin on which the amino acid uh, one letter code is given and then you put it back so what is the probability that when you draw the first five coins you will get you will get this word drawn okay and one of the options was that this cannot be possible because uh, some of these letters are not assigned to any amino acid right so that was also one confusing option but all of them are assigned to a particular amino acid so all you had to do was 1 upon 20 1 upon 20 1 upon 20 like that you will get the answer like you can just calculate this 1 upon 20 into 1 upon 20 like that uh, the answer will come out to be about 3.6 into 10 to the power minus 7 that was one of the options right i i mean you can do this calculation actually i went for the exam at 10 30 right i just entered at 10 30 and i left by 11 30 so this was one one good benefit of the online exam i did not have to wait right so i quickly saw the questions solved a few and then uh, i went out right so one hour before also they were letting us leave Anyway, so this next question was pretty interesting and this is sodium borohydride and cerium trichloride. This is Lucci reagent, right? This is a very important question from CSI net purpose also because uh, over here, this was actually a very difficult question. You, you might have thought that this ketone will get reduced definitely, but the ester won't be reduced. But if you thought that if ketone is getting reduced, then the aldehyde should also get reduced. But that is not the case because over here, methanol is present. So the methanol will react with this aldehyde and form an acetyl because of which the aldehyde would not be reduced ester itself cannot be reduced by luce reagent so the only the ketone will be reduced to alcohol and the aldehyde will remain as it is okay and then there was a, a fancy uh, diagram that was given to us and they had asked the symmetry for that diagram so that that had an inversion symmetry right and along with that it had a fourfold uh, rotational axis which was perpendicular to the plane in which the molecule was drawn then this was a question from pericyclic quite simple over there it had said that from this reagent to this reagent we are transform transforming and uh, uh, what do we require do we require acid base or do we require heat or light so the answer was heat so over here your six pi uh, uh, you know six pi um, uh, disrotatory motion should take place okay because the hydrogens were cis it was given that these hydrogens are cis so for the cis geometry you had to take uh, heat okay the next one was for a spontaneous reaction what do we require so for a spontaneous reaction delta g should be less than zero okay then uh, entropy of the surroundings does not change for which process so the answer was reversible process options were endothermic exothermic irreversible and reversible then it was said that which of the following amino acids is not hydrophobic so the answer was arginine because it's basic in nature right uh, then wavelength this was a question from csi net again i don't remember which year but this is a question from csi net that arrange them according to the wavelength so magnes uh, in in lmct transition this is ligand to metal charge transfer will take place so mno4 minus will have the highest wavelength followed by chromium complex followed by vanadium right 
then there was a question on mass that two bromo uh, propane and uh, one bromo propane are given to us and their ma masses are given to be 120 to 124 and the base peak is given at 43 i mean this is one of the options like there were four options given to us so the data was given as 120 to 124 that two equal peaks are seen at 122 and 124 corresponding to m plus peak and m plus 2 peak right and then at 43 the base peak was given so it corresponds to which of the following molecules so it was said that either two bromopropane one bromopropane uh, both of them or none of these so the answer was both uh, two bromopropane and uh, one bromopropane okay then nmr and mass data was given to us and there were four molecules given to us like ethyl methyl ketone and acetaldehyde okay some very simple molecules it's a very very uh, you can say very easy question and for that the answer was none of these okay okay then there was this graphical question that uh, fx equal to sin x is given to us so what will be the graph looking like so for fx equal to sin x if we take x equal to 0 this will become sin 0 so on the uh, x axis we had on the y axis we had fx and on the x axis x axis we had x right so in in two of the graphs that were given in the options your uh, for x equal to 0 uh, the graph was not going to 0 so those two graphs we can eliminate as it is but among these two graphs both showed that at zero your uh, basically at uh, x equal to zero your graph was coming to zero so that is correct then how to choose between those two graphs out of these two graphs the first graph is correct right there was one graph like this and then there was this graph which was, it had simple loops so this one was the correct graph okay then there was a question from clausius clebron equation that a pressure was given to us as 1 atm and the boiling point was given to us as 373 Kelvin and they had asked what will be pressure at 0.5 atm so accordingly uh, the boiling point will come out to be 357 Kelvin so at half atm pressure the boiling point will be less okay this was actually a very easy question why because the options were given to us uh, given to us as 423 357 uh, 273 and 373 so obviously if pressure changes all of you know when we go high up on the mountains the boiling point is less so we need to cook rice for a long time i hope all of you have heard it so this 423 kelvin is increasing which is not possible 373 kelvin is remaining same which is not possible 273 kelvin means that uh, that your um, it, it, this is freezing point of water so that means the water will start boiling at its freezing point which is obviously not possible because at Mount Everest, uh, the pressure in ATM, atmospheric pressure is 0.33. If I'm not wrong, it's around 0.33, okay, at Mount Everest. So even at Mount Everest also, your water does not start boiling, right, at 273 Kelvin. So the only possible answer was 357. I did not even calculate, okay, because I knew this is the answer, okay. Then standard error question was there. And uh, so in standard error, it was given that standard error is plus minus 1 for 7 iterations. So what will be the standard error for 0.5 iterations? Uh, I mean, what the standard error was given to us as 0.5. We had to find number of iterations n. So I think the answer for this should be 28. If it was there in the options, you can calculate. This is the formula. So from this formula, you can calculate. Answer was co coming out to be 28. Okay. Then uh, in Raman, what will happen? There was a very conceptual question that was given from Raman Spectra. And for that, the answer was that the number of green photons are going to increase. You will see an increase in the number of green photons. Okay. Uh, then there was a typical question from your polyhedral uh, electron pair theory, right? And over here, uh, this was closo, this was nido, germanium complex, and RH6CO16 was closo again. Okay. Then there was a question that in vibrational spectroscopy, when we take oscillator, your zero point energy is there. That means even at ground state, the energy does not come to be zero. But for a rigid rotor, it comes to be zero. Why is that? So the reason is because we are taking it as a rigid rotor. If you take the oscillator also rigid, there is a chance that the vibration ground state will come out to be equal to zero. Okay. Then there was a question. Uh, this is from June 2013 CSI net question. The answer is 5 and 10, 13 CNMR question. Okay. Uh, then there was this question that Cavon was given to us, two isomers of Cavon and two isomers of limonene. And we had to find that whether there will be r and s so it's very simple if for this it will be r and for this it will be again r so these two are r so the other two will be s okay and how did you have to find out it's given above the plane so hydrogen will be below the plane so you just find out the um, priority priority of all these uh, groups so this will be given priority number um, this carbon will be given priority number one like over here 
then uh, this carbon will be given 2 and this carbon will be given 3 all right similarly you can do for this case also in this case it will be uh, different this will be given 1 this will be given 2 this will be given 3 so they were testing your priority how how well can you give the priority also then there was a question that t 99.9 you had to find for first order reaction and t 90 was given to us so we have a simple formula t 99.9 is equal to 3 into t 90 so t 90 was given to us as 30 minutes so t 99.9 is equal to 90 minutes or one and a half hours right then osmotic pressure question was there so something very very uh, simple so this is the formula just by using this formula you could have calculated uh, then there was a question that uh, you know the b value was given to us that is the rotation constant was given to us as 1.92 centimeter inverse and they had asked that for uh, uh, first they had asked the value for 14 and 15 n so you had to do a lot of calculations since i told you i came one hour late and i left one hour early i did not do the calculations uh, but uh, uh, the so whatever value you get b value is given to us so, so you just have to use a simple formula rotation constant is given to us but uh, they had also asked between the uh, relation between the radius so you know b is proportional to 1 upon i which is equal to 1 upon mu r square right so if i am saying that the reduced mass is going to increase okay for 14 and 15 n the reduced mass is going to increase so the radius will decrease so the radius for 14 and 15 n is going to be lesser than that for 14 n and 14 n okay uh, then there was a question on c2 f6 that C2F6 is given, so what will be the intensity of the mass given the molecular M plus peak is 100. So what will be the intensities of M plus 1, M plus 1 and M plus 2. So there's a simple formula that you can use uh, for uh, since 13C is there and fluorine is 100% abundant. So M plus 1 and M plus 2 will only be there because of 13C and the abundance of 13C is 1.1%. So accordingly you have to do uh, the calculations and one will come out to be 2.24 and the other will come out to be 0 0.024 and then at last there was a question on photoelectric effect that if we increase the intensity of the incoming uh, um, electromagnetic radiation then what will happen to the ejected photon so the kinetic energy of the ejected photon is going to increase okay the number of photons ejected will remain the same only the kinetic energy will increase if you in increase the intensity okay so I think these are 25, 26 questions that I have solved for you. Uh, there are still uh, 13 or 14 questions that are left out. So if you can post it in the comment section, which all questions I have left out, I can solve that for you as well. Right. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful and all the very best for your results.